Hello everyone, welcome back to Coffee's Gaming Club. Welcome back to another unboxing review. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, we're back, and this time we're gonna look at a uh, Group Five car from Carrera. According to them, this is a D two Mazda Pantera. According to me, I think it is an interpretation of the D two Mazda Pantera because it looks very different from the real world car. But let's get to it. All right, let's take a look at this vehicle. So, starting at the front end, we get a very narrow front end here. Uh, so, it is a shark nose front end. So, you can see that it scoops in, pulls back, and then comes out of the front splitter. So, I call that shark nose front end. Uh, as we sweep up here, you know, we get that. We get the lighting just underneath the leading edge of the hood. Uh, really nicely placed by Carrera. Will look awesome on the track, I'm pretty sure. And then we get into the hood, and this is where it gets a, a little crazy here, from my opinion. Uh, the hood is full of vents. I've got one, two, three, four, five vents all across the hood. Um, uh, it's very, very busy, uh, you know, in terms of vents. Uh, but the really cool thing and thing I like the most about this livery is the way it denotes uh, the flow of wind, I believe. So you have these two white GT stripes that come across the hood. They're nice and solid. Then we get into the windshield, and then we get into the Carrera banner, and then you start to see these white stripes start to start to uh, disintegrate or become more turbulent. Turbulent. So as you go across the uh, the roof of the vehicle, you see that the white line starts to split up, and then as you get into the rear, it becomes very turbulent as it exits out through the rear spoiler here. And this livery is carried through on the driver's and passenger's uh, sides, especially on the rear quarter panels. You can see that, once again, the wind is very turbulent, or the livery denotes like very turbulent uh, wind as it goes out through the back, right? Um... From the side view, you'll note that there's a nice rake on this vehicle. Um, you get to see the, you know, very clearly you can see the driver in there with his yellow and black helmet. Uh, he's also got a white racing suit on and is cut off just below the shoulders. Um, you'll see that the new level uh, title sponsor is on the driver's door, the passenger door, and on the rear spoiler as well. So very clearly represented there you get the word pantera at the bottom which is to denote that this is a dito maso pantera so the dito maso pantera was a 1970s uh sports car it was italian designed with a ford power plant in fact out of the 7,000 cars that were produced three quarters of them were sold in america by the ford lincoln motor company so technically it is an american powered italian race car um Today, it's got a quite a bit of a cult following, and, you know, we'll, the car that comes closest to this design from Carrera, to me, is the GT5S, and I'll put up a picture here so you can see it. But as you can see, this is Carrera's interpretation of the Di Tommaso. It does not represent what the car looks like to a T in real life. Uh, and uh, I stand by that statement. And if you guys can show me a digital master that looks like this in real life, please, uh, you know, send me pictures or send me links in the comment below because I've looked far and wide and couldn't find something like this. So um, I believe this is Carrera's own interpretation. And anyway, let's get back to review. So as we get through the driver's side, you can see it's, uh, you know, pretty clear got a lot of wide fender arches as we go to the rear this is where it gets really interesting it almost looks like it has no rear diffuser at all it's just been sliced off uh you get a really small uh back end here the two exhaust pipes come out and you got a simple uh brake system uh and you can see how wide that body kit is on it right uh, the passenger side is pretty much identical to the driver's side of the vehicle um same logos, same representation, uh, so nothing out of the ordinary there. You get these really nice little side markers here that I noticed. Uh, and the other thing I noticed was the weird placement of the side view mirror. So here we get the side view mirror mounted on the driver's side door. 
and then here it's on the hood on the passenger side so really weird mounting of the side view mirrors uh same side view mirror just mounted two different ways uh very interesting i thought and something that was quirky in the car um you can see the side view the side mirrors here uh sorry the side windows here uh do have a cutout so that uh you can see directly into the vehicle and i guess this is for airflow into the vehicle as well uh, on the passenger side you can also see that there's a fire extinguisher in there um, from the bottom of the vehicle, when we look at the chassis, you can see that this one has very easy to remove magnets. It has two magnets. Both of them are strip magnets, and you can just remove them by undoing these screws and taking them out. Uh, other than that, you can see the really wide rear wheels, and uh, it looks like this car would perform and handle really well on the track, but we'll find out next. <laughs> So welcome back. Um, we have put the D2 Master Pantera on the track. We got some uh, some benchmark numbers for it. So let's take a look and see how it did. On the track, it came out at 4.723 seconds around our DDT track, uh, which is decent, not extremely fast, not extremely slow. Um, it, it did cover ground pretty good. Uh, if you want to see the specs here, we got a weight of 111 grams. It's 38 millimeters in height. Uh, it has a pretty long length at 145 millimeters, uh, but uh, the wheelbase is standard around 80 millimeters, which is about 70. We have Carrera ranges with uh, wheelbases from 71 to 80 millimeters, uh, pretty average on a 132nd scale car. Um, so 4.723 seconds was a stock run. There's nothing added to this car. It came straight out of the box. Uh, so let's see how it stacks up on the leaderboard. So if you see on the leaderboard, it is not on the first page, but it does appear on the second page at uh, spot number 13 on our leaderboard, which is not too shabby. Uh, it beats out the Aston Martin Vantage. The Ford GT number 66 was beaten out by this car. So uh, pretty impressive for what it is and uh well performing uh just on a side note here if you do uh if you want to know more about what we're up to we do have a summer slam gt3 series that's coming up which is our final series for the year uh we're going to be racing that so if it's interests you please just click here on the details at our website and you can get more information on that so my final thoughts um the car I'll be honest, this car is not one of my favorite looking cars. Um, I'm not a big fan of it, but it is one of, you know, uh, it is a car that if you are a collector, you should have in your collection. Um, I don't think I'd be racing this car anytime soon. 
Uh, the rear tires are very big, very thick, and they do pick up a lot of dirt. So if you are going to race this vehicle or you're planning to buy it for racing or you have Group 5 racing and you want to run this car, uh, by all means do so. It is a pretty good performing car. It does have some squirreliness to it. Um, and uh, you really need to clean the tires every single time you run it on the track. Otherwise, it will get uh, a little bit unwieldy. Um, the way I clean the tires is very simple. I use a lint roller and just rub it against the, uh, you know, the tire against the lint roller to remove any excess. Uh, always through your tires as well. It will just go a long way in making this car, car better to drive and more fun to drive. Um, I like the way that the uh, magnets are very easy access. So if you do want to do magnetless racing, you can just quickly remove the magnets without having to open up the insides and get into the chassis. Uh, which I find is a pain in some of the Corrado Carrera cars where the magnet is underneath uh, the actual gearing. So my final thoughts, uh, if you like this kind of vehicle and you're into the styling, you know, go ahead and add it to collection. I do know that Carrera is releasing another two liveries this year. Um, personally, I might pick up the purple one because it, I like that color and it might fit really well into my collection of cars. Uh, other than that, if you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe below. Um, and if you'd like to see some other vehicles in the Group 5 collection, please let me know in the comments as well. Other than that, guys, uh, this is the end of my review. Hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, uh, have fun on rails, and we'll see you then.